you're playing in, say, a church or an auditorium and you experience feedback. There are a number of devices out there for monitoring frequency, frequency spectrum. One is you can go to your smartphone and download a feedback detector. You also can go and get a rather high-end frequency meter. Uh, this one is set to a 30 to 90 sound pressure level. The weighting's flat. You can see the spectrum from 20 some hertz to about 10,000 something hertz. And as the sound pressure comes up, you'll see the individual bars move around as they are now. I'm going to play a feedback, but I want you to hear and see the feedback frequency and see what is being measured on both the app and the rather expensive frequency analyzer. You'll hear talking in the background and then you'll hear the, freq the feedback. Let's take a closer look at what is going on here. On the right, or on the left, the smart device is reporting around 1900 hertz. On the right, the very expensive frequency analyzer is showing 80 hertz, 2000 hertz, and something around 5000 hertz. What's being reported on the expensive frequency analyzer is the decibel level or sound pressure level of the frequency that is the loudest, 2000 hertz. The smart device is the same thing, is reporting the frequency of the, which has the highest decibel level. Could it report more? Well, this app just is not doing that. It's reporting one of many, and I'll show you which one of many is reporting here in just a moment. So the difference between here is, you know, you're looking at this, you're trying to figure out where the feedback is generating from. What do you filter? What do you cut? What do you look at as far as feedback. Well, in each case, you would probably look at the one with the highest decibel level. And actually, it's the 80 decibel, which is the trigger. So let's go to the next one. Let's, again, the smart devices here on the, on the left, expensive device here, and then I have a frequency analyzer. The bottom line is the frequency coming in the top line represents a peak hold. So I told it to hold for 12 seconds. So I, as the frequency comes and goes, I can at least see what it used to look like. Here's the 80 hertz. Here's the 2000 hertz. And in between are some other harmonics. What you need to know about feedback is it's a tsunami. It's the 80 hertz which is actually triggering everything else. At this stage in the life of the feedback, you'll hear some rumbling at the 80 hertz, but you'll hear the squeal, the characteristic squeal at 2,000 hertz. What's really going on here is it's this 80, which is the fundamental frequency, which is the problem of the feedback. If you can kill the 80 hertz, the rest of this will not generate. It'll be much less likely to. This, again, this is a tsunami. This generates it, and these are all repetitive cycles, and they keep building and building and building. And pretty, pretty soon you're hearing the squeal, but it's not the squeal that's the problem. It's this 80 hertz. The item on the left, the smart device on the left, will generally report 720, 1400, 1900. It really depends if which frequency in here it hears first, which is the loudest. This is fairly typical, but it doesn't preclude the fact that there may be a frequency between the fundamental and this frequency here, which is the 24th harmonic, not the second harmonic. It's the, sec it's the most loudest, but it's the 24th harmonic. There may be harmonics in here that may peak faster and louder than the squeal here, and that will report here. So if you're using a smart device on the left, Chances are, whatever is reporting, the 720 to 1400 something, 1900, or maybe a 2300 hertz, 
it is probably the fundamental 80 that is causing the feedback. This is what we're going to explore in the next video. I'm going to show you the entire life cycle of a feedback frequency. So that'll be in part two.